We are now recording. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it popped up for me. Great. So finally get to start meeting again. Welcome everyone. I declare a quorum. So we have everyone here except Rob. Mm -hmm. And seeing no members of the public, we'll skip item one public comment and move on to the minutes. Um, and so the minutes from last time are fairly brief. Did everyone have time to take a quick look and see if I can? Maybe I can. Yeah. yeah. Me and Rob weren't there, so he probably would have abstained anyway, and, and I will be abstaining on a vote uh, as well, just because I haven't got a clue. OK. Look at that. Welcome to Rob. Nice. All right. Hey, Rob. No, what do you mean, Rob? This is, we're viewing Tanya's. Oh, did Rob pop on? Rob joined. Rob on. I missed it. I was yes. looking down. Yeah. He's still getting set up. Oh, there yeah. we are. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hello, hello. Hey, thank you for joining. Like a, a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just happy that I can see all you healthy and if not, you know. Got to stay that way until Thanksgiving here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because you'll still be counting absentee ballots. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I, I told my husband, you won't be seeing me for months and months and months. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, boy. It's already started. Yep. So, uh, any comments on the minutes? Yes. Let's see. I mean, no. And this can be kind of a way to remember where we were, that we still, we still haven't met with OHS. And uh, maybe, I, you know, it may still be crazy days for him with the election only a few months off. So if um, we can ask him if he's still willing to do like a, a Zoom demo, or maybe later we can talk about making just an item of like a list of questions that we can try to get answers about. Yeah, I mean, our, our own deadlines have blown by, so, oh, yeah. you know. So we probably don't need to rush him to get in before the election anyway. So should we vote on the minutes? Yeah, so it sounds like nobody has any so, uh, or memory of the meeting. <laughs> we have to like have a, somebody move to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes. I second. second. All right. So let's see. How should we do voting? Do you want a? We can raise hands. You know. See, like that. If you if you close this off the screen, you can see. Yes. Sure. There's some reactions you can do. Yeah, you can vote like that. <laughs> but it might be easier because there's more than just yes and no. Uh, if we just go through person by person. Yeah, since there aren't that many of us, I think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Hi, Shavina. Hi, Shavina. How's it going? Hello, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't find the Zoom invite, so I was going through all my emails from Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that's never happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't have a lot of emails to sift through. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was just short of going across the hall and being like, Sue, what is the meeting ID? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the back corner of town hall in a meeting room. There's nobody yeah. here. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's quiet. <laughs> How is everyone? I'm sorry to bust in the meeting. No, it's all right. Good. Healthy. Pretty Good. happy. Good. Oh. Good. Awesome. We got a haircut. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> now I got it back in a ponytail because of the heat. Yep. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, I approve. Is it hot that. outside? I'm like trapped in my little air conditioned room. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. yeah, I just came in too. All right. So minutes look good to me. All right. Susan. Uh, I. All right. John. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ellen? Aye. Peggy? Aye. Tanya? Aye. And I abstain. I also abstain. Okay.
Got it. My agenda to make sure I'm actually doing this in the right order. All right. Uh, so next I had listed uh, assess progress and next steps. Um, and it sounded like as part of that, we should really think about the potential timeline that while we may not have a particular rush, I'd also like to get our work wrapped up. I don't see a real need to drag it out if we can get answers to our questions sooner than later. Yep. Um, I mean, there's also the question of given the state ballot measure on ranked choice voting, how would that affect us? Um, and maybe this is a question for the town manager, like does he want to, or the town council, you know, would that make everything easier if we just find out what the outcome is? Or should we just submit all of our recommendations and they'll find out what the outcome is and that will help them proceed? I think if we get it, you know, done relative, I mean, we were about halfway through writing that report, right? Yeah, I'd like to just get it done before we completely forget <laughs> all that stuff we learned. Yeah, if we can get that done relatively soon, you know, we're also going to probably have to incorporate some new information that we find out when uh, we do the mail-in ballot stuff, like, at least I've been thinking on my end, the, you know, the requirements definitely need to now include not that they didn't before, but it'll be more important, you know, high speed scanners for the um, for the ballots, because if everybody's, you know, sending in uh, ballots by mail, then we're going to need have enough high speed scanners that can handle this, as opposed to the small amount of absentee ballots that we usually get. And there's also the issue then if it's going to be more than one page, how to make sure we get all the pages back. Mm hmm. So that's something we have to think through as well. Um, and then also with the state, uh, looking at the language they're using and probably adapting ours from that, since the town council should be familiar with that language or that's, that's stuff that you know is being presented to the whole state. So anything we can use due to leverage what's being done for the state, I think would make it our life easier and everyone else's lives easier too. Yeah. Sabine, I feel like you're looking at me. Just that picture. <laughs> she is looking at you. She is. <laughs> I'm working too, sorry. That's why I put it up so that you guys don't see the chair those, moving. It's one of those pictures of I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I got. I know what she's about. I got that, that same is picture. That like, like right? This? Is that one yeah, of these? You do. <laughs> Like, you do have the same picture. Yeah, that's right. Me and Shavina have both <laughs> angles covered, right? You guys stop staring at us. <laughs> We've got our eyes on you. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I think you bring up sort of two of the, the key concerns that I wanted to highlight in the report for like, is there considering is this doable? You know, is the given the complexity of a rank choice ballot, can we scan them fast enough to really make it feasible? And I don't like the idea of two page ballot, like having to have two separate pieces of paper. Um, so I think them being able to, for a regular election, get it all on one piece of paper is really important. Um, and I think the writing candidates was another key issue that if too many of those, you know, every time somebody writes in, if we have to manually enter that whole ballot, that becomes problematic. And the other thing I had written down was hand count. Um, that was a really key concern. Is that feasible? The, yeah. the, the, I, sorry, manda Mark. the mandatory hand count in case of a, uh, a recount, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you need to be able to exactly recreate, say we went with LHS, you'd have to be able to exactly recreate the algorithm in some way, right? And there's all kinds of restrictions by the state on how you can actually handle the ballots. And if the algorithm is too complicated, that becomes unwieldy. So I think that's a serious concern to think about. Well, we also needed to get an answer from legal about what constituted a hand recount, right? Because it's obvious that using an Excel spreadsheet is, you know, considered at least by, uh, you know, Minnesota to be acceptable for a hand recount. 
but that's a computer assisted program for hand recounting. So where exactly is the boundary there and you know, what's considered you know, a hand recount and what's not considered a hand recount, right? So that's important to us because it could turn out that like, hey, we can actually still use a program to calculate the results in a quote hand recount. It's just that a specific part of that action needs to be performed in a specific way. Yes, yes, I agree. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I remember from the interview that they said the scanning of the ranked choice ballot, uh, God, I forget. I don't think it was any slower than a regular ballot, was it? I don't believe so. I don't think it was, or, or just marginally so. I don't think the scan yeah. is going to be an issue. Because the scanner is just recording data. It's not doing the calculation. So theoretically, it shouldn't be slower. But as long as it's on a single page. Uh, I mean, we've done multi-page ballots before. They're horrible for their own reasons. I just don't know if they're worse for ranked choice voting than they are for plurality voting. I just mean if you have two separate pages you need to scan, presumably that takes twice as long. Yeah, absolutely. Or scanning one piece of paper. Yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> Also, two pieces of paper um, is like having a double-sided ballot and voters are inherently, um, they, they're bad about flipping the ballot over. They'll vote one right. side and leave and then miss the second side and be very yeah. upset. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, if they're doing absentee, they're, they may mail back just one page and we're not there to catch it or nobody's there to catch yeah. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the, the point I'm making is that that's just not different from plurality. Right. Yeah. It's like, not a good idea in general. Didn't we find out that we couldn't scan? The state doesn't allow scanning? The state doesn't allow you to take photos of the ballot. Photos, scanning is fine, but that means we can't use the functionality from uh, some of the equipment that they have, which takes a picture of the write-in uh, vote and puts it in the data for us. That's right, that's what Which it was. is super obnoxious. <sighs> That something so, you could make a recommendation to town council to uh, submit a bill to the state legislature to allow. <laughs> yes, exactly. Functionality of voting machines. I mean, that sounds convenient. I don't know if I'd make that suggestion until we actually find out the reason why they don't want the photographs in the first place, because we don't want to open a can of worms by trying to solve our one particular problem, right? Mm -hmm. But if they could make an exception just for this kind of case, that would be fantastic. Shavina, do you have any insight into the uh, the history of that prohibition? Yeah. So I, my thought on that is, <clears throat> and it's only because I have sat in on a few of the, um, of the demos, and I've also done some research on the ranked choice voting, and based on how I know the secretary kind of feels about um, elections in general. I think it's just to keep the security and to reduce voter fraud. You know, voters are always concerned about people knowing how they vote. And so um, if we use the scan function on the tabulators, on the um, DS200s, then voters, voters get, they, they ask us those questions anyway about their absentee and early voting ballots. Well, who, who handles them at the polls? Well, then you'll be able to know how I voted. And I think that that may be part of the reason. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure. Yeah, that sounds like we need to take a look at that and maybe talk with somebody who's um, going to have problems with it <laughs> so we can yeah. devise a way to deal with that. And so it comes down to just like we do in regular elections, it's about building the confidence with the voters that their vote is going to be secure and mm -hmm. private. Right. Are there other logistical issues that we haven't mentioned that we should be thinking about that may be particular to ranked choice voting? One thing, I mean, the, again, if um, a huge amount, number of people are voting by mail now, um, then we can't reject or we can't have them fix a ballot that is incorrectly filled out. So we were hoping that, you know, at the polls, when the, some person put it in the machine, it would kick it back if there was an overvote or something, some mm -hmm. other issue. And that's not going to happen if we're all voting by mail. 
So. Yeah, we won't be able to do voter education at the polls, which is never That's ideal, but of course right. you have to. Yep. So in, in states where they've had places like Washington State, where they've had um, all vote by mail for a long time now, uh, does anyone have any sense as to how they've been handling that kind of issue? Has there been an uh, extra voter education effort or? I, my memory is foggy. Does Washington State have ranked choice voting? No. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, whether it's ranked choice or some other plurality voting. Yeah. It's the same problem with um, voter education. My concern is now going to be that if if we get ranked choice voting and we still have vote by mail, we're going to have the first election with ranked choice voting and an enormous number of ballots are going to be tossed out because of uh, misvoting. And then people are going to say, oh, well, this is obviously a problem with ranked choice voting. We have to get rid of it. And so I, I don't know if Sue spoke to this or not. So the vote by mail legislation that passed on july 6th is temporary that's only for this year right so moving forward vote by mail um will revert back to absentee and early voting okay yeah no yeah, i have so that's only you. this year mm -hmm. and and ranked choice won't, won't be implemented until what fall of 2021 it's a good if point. it passes I mean, yeah, if it passes I mean, yeah. not making a transition to a whole new system until we're sort of settled down and back in a regular voting situation so that most people are doing it in person and can get support in in that filling out the ballot get their questions answered or you know have it checked well, well the good news yeah i'm sorry to interrupt um if it does pass the good news is that the state will be focusing on educating voters and so we can ride the coattails there the only difference is here you're voting for two people for you know a position rather than one and also that you, um, you know, we have a different algorithm for then processing it. But aside from that, I mean, the general education for the state will really help us a lot. But we're still hoping, right, that if uh, it doesn't pass at the state, that we'll still be able to get the uh, legislation approved for ranked choice voting at the town level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So maybe in the report, we need to in include a contingency on, uh, how we might handle it if in fact uh god forbid we aren't returned to some sense some uh, uh seeming normalcy uh until uh, uh when this is is put into place in the fall of 2021 yeah we probably don't need to spend a ton of time but i think you're right we need to add something in there saying like hey you know in case we are doing mail-in voting next year for whatever reason you know whether it's because more pandemic or uh, people end up liking it a lot and just want to do it. Uh, and so legislature passes it or something. Just sort of a note in there that talks about like, you know, we're going to need to actually reformat how we do voter education to make sure it's not a giant mess. Yeah. Is it even still, given how delayed we are and presumably everything else is, is it even a likely option we'd be able to do ranked choice voting? For next year's local election, I mean, are we getting too late now? Davina, you want to talk to that? Maybe. That I'm on. Um, well, it depends on planning. So, the if if it passes in November, um, what would have to happen is you'd have to we'd have to be able to get the approval from finance for the budget to buy the new tabulators. That could and be a challenge. ES yeah, and so ESNS is already has the DS two hundreds that are you know um, coded to handle ranked choice, but that would be and I I got a quote from um, ESNS just for regular tabulators not to do ranked choice voting, and um, finance says that that's a that would be considered a capital um, purchase, and so um, it wasn't going to be feasible in FY twenty one, maybe for FY twenty two which would be in time for the November um, local election of next year. Mm -hmm. So I can't say for sure, but that would be, that would be the next hurdle. So if it When's happens the in November, fiscal year end for Amherst? Um, so it is, uh, the fiscal year runs July 1 to June 30th. Okay. So if it does pass for the state, Shavina, which mm -hmm. would be 
before November of 2021, will every town then need to get tabulators that work? That's if they choose the, that's if the town, if the municipality chooses to do a ranked choice style of voting. They don't have to. Yeah. But, oh, so I thought it would be for all state seats. It yeah, be, but if it's for all state seats, a, sorry, go on. Okay. So first, if that passes for, if I, I haven't read the question, so if it passes for state seats in Estonia yeah. state election, which is in even number years, which would be 2022. Okay. So yeah, I don't. I didn't read it carefully to see what besides state seats are on it that might be in 2021. Okay. Also, if the towns already have machines that are capable of uh, scanning ranked choice ballots, uh, then you know it's not an extra expenditure for them because for statewide seats, the tabulation is going to have to occur at the state level, so the town's not going to have to buy any equipment for that. It's only you know like us where we want to pass, uh, you know, we want to get it implemented at the town level too that we actually need tabulation machines here. We need tabulation machines for all elections. So we use the same tabulator for state and for local elections. Yeah. Yeah, just that if you have, uh, with the ranked choice voting, if you have, um, if it's for a state seat, the results need to be collated at the same time for all municipalities. So Correct. the towns wouldn't have, like, they wouldn't have those machines. The state would have those machines. Well, unless like, the system where you have the, the towns actually scan the ballots and you send just the little memory thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I understand that. What I mean is they then don't have to, like, get the, buy the tabulating machinery itself. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. No, so it's called, it's, so most towns use what's called an ERM, which is an election result ma uh, machine that tabulates votes. And so you use right. the same equipment. It, you use the same equipment for every election. You use the same tabulation function. So if a town already has a DS200, DS200 is the only machine right now that will do ranked choice voting. So those municipalities that already have DS200s would have them when they have their maintenance done annually would then get their maintenance upgraded so that it can do ranked choice voting. So that is the only change. So they wouldn't have to buy all new machines like we would have. Right, right mm -hmm. now, the machines we have are AccuVotes. They can't handle that. I'm also so using the, the wrong terminology, which is probably leading to confusion because it's been a while. Uh, as you're saying, the tabulators are the ones that are at the precincts that are scanning stuff, whereas I'm actually talking about the, the machine that calculates the actual result of the election which That's has the to ERM. be yeah the ERM yeah mm -hmm. oh man I gotta get back in it <laughs> <laughs> it's like anything you know it's like riding a bike <laughs> I can't do that e no I can ride a bike oh <laughs> no worries we got you <laughs> all right uh okay so it sounds like we need to just get back on board with the uh the report we have a couple of tasks associated with that that we need to investigate, but mm -hmm. unless something's drastically changed with the state of available machinery in the last four or five months. Not that we know of. No, I'm sure that's still the same. Yeah. Um, the two things, the, the, the sort of the two people we've really been hoping to meet with were the town attorney and the Jeff Silvestro, the LHS rep, um, so I guess one question is, did we, do we feel like we still need to do that or like some of the things like the, you know, getting stuff to the legislature is kind of moot depending on how the ballot measure turns out. Do we still proceed with trying to get, although we may still have questions for like the hand count. Um, that we really need to either get her to send us an answer or talk to her about. Has, uh, has that question been posed to her about the hand count? Um, no, we, were, we, we originally had a meeting with her set up where we were going to ask her about it. Like she had raised, when we met with her, you know, a year ago, <laughs> way back when, um, she raised that issue. She's very concerned about the hand count issue because they're, they're the very specific, like, you know, everything's bundled in the groups of 50 and it just sounds very difficult to do that with ranked choice. 
Um, but we didn't at the time specifically ask, could it be interpreted as allowing, say, an Excel spreadsheet supported recount where you're just using the ballots to kind of verify that things are entered in right, but then use the Excel to actually calculate. Um, I can find out, I can talk to um, Paul and see if we can just have like some targeted questions to ask her and see if she can just get us some answers instead yeah. of having to have a whole meeting. That's probably the most useful at this point because that won't take a lot of her time. Um, and we're probably going to end up having more and more questions as she answers questions, so. Yeah, and I think also as we watch what happens at the state level, that could yeah. be a whole bunch of questions for her. I think the biggest benefit, if it passes at the state level, is that they're going to run into the same problems we're talking about right now. <laughs> and in order to deal with it, they're probably going to end up having to change or at least well-define some of the details around hand counting and stuff like that. Uh, which would mean that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have to find workarounds. Rather, we could just, you know, deal with actual solutions. Although, as Savina said, it's for 2022 for them. And aren't we hoping to do this next fall, 2021? So, uh, I mean, on our, our schedule. Shavina was just saying that our, our finance doesn't, won't allow us to buy oh, right. uh, machines fiscal year 21. Which ends it. So we could get them by November. We're, sorry, we're currently in FY21. So yeah. for November of 2022, uh, for next for 21 would be FY22. Right. So there is oh, a possibility okay, yeah. of, of there being money in the budget. It could for... be. Yeah. We're always one year ahead. Mm -hmm. Fiscal years are one year ahead. My understanding is we the town was hoping to buy new voting machines. Either way, is that true that we just, we need new voting machines? We do, um, and that was, that was the reason that I um, got the proposal for the new machines, and so that was my response back in finance, that it probably wouldn't happen in FY21, and so it was something that I have to add to the budget for FY22. I would be really hesitant, however, to have us figure out a whole slew of solutions for the fall of 21 if the right. state is figuring out stuff for the fall of 22. It just yeah. doesn't make sense to I me. Agree. We just would want to postpone. Yep. Well, and plus we want to go off of their education. I mean, that's a huge mm -hmm. part. Right. right, both. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. It sounds like, though, what we do need is a recommendation for machines that would, you know, since we have to replace them anyways, and we should have that recommendation in place so that um, if uh, Shavina needs to go forward and, you know, get the ball rolling on that, then uh, we can uh, have a recommendation that would both serve our current needs and also, you know, give us latitude in case the Massachusetts bill passes. Yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah. Yep. And I think we should also... Um, that, you know, I think we've had some big ideas about wanting to really provide a ton of information at town council, but you know, our, our mission is really to provide recommendations. So I think, you know, for example, we could make recommendations about how to go about voter education and the kind of um, procedures that need to be reworked up, but we're not responsible for actually generating all of those. Um, Let's hope not. I mean, we don't have to do the implementation, but we are still writing the legislation, right? Well, we have a draft up. It just, yeah. I don't know if it's worth proceeding, and that, that's what we're going to meet with the town attorney about yeah. in March, um, was we wanted her feedback on the appropriateness of that. Well, I know at least for my section of the report, that's where the recommendation is going to come from. So at least for the technical side of things, it makes sense for me to just proceed and finish that out. Um, and then, you know, that report itself will mostly just be data about what's going on, why it's going on, you know, technically wise, what's available. And then, you know, our, our recommendation can change based on what's happening. Right. So, you know, we can make an initial recommendation that includes, you know, machines and techniques and stuff. But also say like, you know, this is based on the current state of everything's effed up and <laughs> like uh, we don't know what's happening in the fall with the law. So our other recommendation is maybe to hold off and see what happens at the state level first. 
Sure, right. And these are only recommendations. So town council, whenever they're making these decisions, can of course be you know, basing it on the current information. If es and S comes out with a great new software that can handle our multi-member rank choice scenario, then it'll open up more options, for instance. Okay, so are we going to go ahead with this report and as much as we can? Yes, so I have like bits and pieces from various people. So one question is just about process. What's the most efficient process for putting the pieces together and getting the whole thing edited? Not doing it in open meeting law as a part of the town. That would be the <laughs> most efficient way of doing it. Well, you uh, I mean, originally, Tanya, you were collecting the pieces. And, right. Uh, it seems full of all kinds of pieces from different people. Yeah, it, it would seem to me to make sense to complete the process so that we have all the pieces and then assess whether, for example, some of them are uh, too summary and others are overly detailed, figure out what the, the, the common course needs to be for the report, and then begin piecing it together and, and probably get uh, one person to produce a, a coherent draft for everyone to review and mark up. We can also leverage, I mean, you know, Zoom and internet technology is, you know, uh, this is something my wife talks about a lot because she's dealing with this over at UMass where now everything's suddenly switching online and, you know, you have a whole bunch of faculty who are like, what's email? Um, it's that we shouldn't just think of Zoom and stuff as a, as a temporary replacement, but we should talk about leveraging what makes this kind of meeting useful. And one of the things that immediately jumps out is we don't have to, uh, ahead of time, send a document to Tanya, who then projects it on the screen. We all have screen sharing ability, so we are able to go through our own sections of the report and show people, uh, you know, from you know from our computers, which we're already set up on. So that would be something I'd like to see too: is people can walk us through their own sections uh, on screen share. It's a good idea. I, I like that approach that maybe we can target a couple sections per meeting for a next series of meetings and um, get everyone's comments back up back on them. The person can kind of present what's in there, get feedback on it, update it, and then send it to me to put together in a master document. Okay, so for I would I would I would argue though that trying to give useful feedback real time through screen sharing doesn't work very well for me. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I need to have a document in front of me that I can go through more carefully and uh, highlight and make notes and that sort of thing. Absolutely, right. yeah. Well, I can I can send the documents out well in advance to everyone. And for example, if you have suggestions, you could screen share your marked up copy of the document, and show us your suggested wording or the places you know that you had comments on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then good. Tanya will have the master document, and she can make those changes while watching your screen and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so for the action plan, we have continue working on the report. We have compile questions uh, for the lawyer. Uh, there was a third one. What was it? Um, well, what about the LHS? So do we also have some questions we wanted to send to Jeff Silvestro? Just um... Can we get some sample ballots from him? Just, I think, We again, already did. Do we have those? Yeah. And yeah. were they words, uh, or like ours where they have, you know, 12 candidates running for X number of seats? I mean, that's, I'm just trying to remember what the matrix looks like. I forget, um, did we make it like candy or something? Uh, whatever. Yeah, we, need, we need to see a big matrix for the number of um, people we'd have um, perhaps, you know, running for a school committee. Yep. Or library. So I'd like to see some, not just, for our numbers, I don't care about the numbers. I want to see what the ballot looks like or something like that. Yeah, I, I remember we sent those out a long time ago, uh, I think, or maybe we got them right before everything got cut off. And so we didn't send them out. So I'll, 
Let me right. let me check and see. Check for a sample. I think what we saw had just one um, contest per page, though, and that's not going to fly, if I'm thinking correctly. So. Uh, we definitely limited what he was going to send us simply because uh, he had limitations on his time. Uh, but I remember me and Tanya talked together and we basically covered the major uh, necessities for our ballots and had them include it. So even though it wasn't going to be, even though the sample ballot wasn't a an exact replica of what our ballot was going to look like, it covered what we needed to see in it uh, in terms of the number of uh, people running for a position, uh, a two-sided ballot, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got that from, I think the, the follow-up I wanted to do with them was, um, he claimed that he couldn't do double-sided. And if that's true, then we're looking at like three pages <laughs> for the ballot or something. It just starts to get completely unworkable. Yeah. Um, well, I, but, but you recall there was also the issue of it's not that. being two-sided because of the potential for bleed through. Oh. Right. And we, we thought that there was perhaps a way around that through yeah, positioning. Tanya, your idea was to flip the ballot so that it wouldn't print over, over print itself on the back as well. It would be over the white space. It looked like the bubbles were only, they were limited to just like yeah. the half. And so if you just have the bubbles on the other side on the other half, it shouldn't yeah. be able to move through. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. No, that was the issue. That's right. Um, we also had filled out, he'd sent us like a, a stack of ballots that um, I bubbled in and sent the Sue, I gave you way back when <laughs> to send back to him and we've never followed through on that. So maybe we should follow through on that with him too. Just that that would generate an example output, I think was what we we're looking for, an example output from a ranked choice election like what one of our local elections would be. Okay. So that's also on the list. Send ballots back to LHS. Yeah, we already did, I think. Oh, okay. So is that right? We already sent that stack back to you? I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. I'll look at my old emails. I'll that check was, out. That was okay. in the sort of middle of March that I think I handed that over to you. Okay. Um, so Sue will check for that. Yes. Uh, the questions that we need for LHS are essentially the ones that Ellen and, and Tanya are bringing up, which is the like the multi page double side that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the actual having uh, him come down and show us the equipment. It was more just for a visual inspection and see how it works and get a walk through and get a feel for it because all the tech specs were already published and pretty clear. Um, the LHS rep has been really helpful in going through all that stuff. Um, also, I think in part because the town's done a really good job of developing a relationship with them uh, mm -hmm. for our current machines. Do they have a video that you know of? I wonder if they have a demo online. Uh, when you I looked, get it right on YouTube. Yeah, when I looked a while ago, I didn't see the demo. Uh, so I'll go check it out. Most of what I saw on their page was just advertising material that told me absolutely nothing about the yeah. product and everything about uh, how great they are with catchphrases. <laughs> but I didn't hold that against them because that's everybody. Trying to catch your eyes, right? That's okay. right. Okay. All right. So I will look for the demo video. Yeah. So it may be we really don't need even a Zoom meeting with him if we can just get some um, answers to sort of our pressing questions just so we mm -hmm. know what, what the ballot would uh, be like in terms of number of pages and maybe um, if he can. We can just finish off that experiment we started with the, the set of demo ballots just to see what the uh, output looks like for the, the result of the fake election. Um, did This is something I want to ask everybody. In your research on uh, other states' uh, uh, implementation of ranked choice voting, did you happen to get any information on the machines they were using other than Minneapolis or Minnesota, which we covered pretty uh, pretty substantially? Um, and because I'd be curious to see what kind of, when I was writing my report, I realized there just wasn't enough information. Like there was all the technical information that was provided and, and what kind of fits our needs and stuff like that. But there wasn't a whole lot of, 
you know, here's what the other state has done with one of these machines that we're looking at, and here are the things that they ran into that we should, you know, learn from. So I can say that there, I did get that information from Maine, um, and I don't remember what I learned, but I'm going to go back to my notes and I can let you know. Thank you. And, and I'll, I'll do the same for the Bay Area because I know they actually switched machines. They had something they did not like and they switched. So I'll, uh, I'll look into that as well. And the Bay Area actually had the multi-member districts. The issue with Maine, I think they only did single, uh, can't single member dis uh, elections, but I think the Bay Area had more like what we have. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. And they first started off not doing a matrix. They had it with check marks and this thing that they couldn't stand. It was, the ballots were horrible. So they switched to uh, the bubbles. Mm -hmm. That would yeah. be super useful. I would really appreciate that. No pressure, I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse, mm -hmm. I just found some of my notes um, about Maine. Do you wanna hear now? Is that helpful or should I summarize and give it to you? Another if time? these are notes that have already been presented at the meeting, uh, I believe it's fine for you to just send them to me through Tanya. Okay. Uh, and then I'll be able to go on it on my own. I also don't okay. want to take up I, a ton of meeting time. I'm sure people okay, have I'll, stuff I'll, to do. I'll go back and look and see what's in the minutes and then. Uh, okay. I mean, if you screen share right now real quick and scroll through it, everything's recorded. So then it will have been shared at a meeting. So then you can definitely yeah, send I it to me. Yeah, I don't think I can screen share my notebook. It's really like eh, hard to read. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think it's. I think I may have mentioned all these things in the past. So we'll. Um, I'll go back and look. Great. Yeah, but I know all the places I checked up on were essentially they were more towns that were doing it and mm -hmm. doing it by hand because they couldn't afford the software. Yeah. And they were not happy about it. I wouldn't be. <laughs> Shavina's over there like, man, if I had to do that by I hand, know. like people would be not, no, not happening. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not uh -huh. my lane at all. I was an English major, not a math major. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's no way the town should yeah, do it by hand. It makes no sense. Yeah. No. We'd be here for a month. Even the Minneapolis style copy and pasting extravaganza is just... Just, that makes no sense. That seemed just miserable and not, not a good process. Mm. And it's open to error. You don't want anything to be open to error. That was actually something I was thinking about when we were talking about uh, pitching, you know, the, the taking a picture of the write-in ballots or the write-ins to, uh, you know, use for ranked choice voting. And I, you know, I, I didn't mention it because I was like, we probably don't want to point that out and we probably don't have data on it. But man, wouldn't it be useful to say like, hey, here's the, you know, error percentage when we do it by hand. Here's the error percentage when you do it in a machine, right? So if you're trying to tell us that not taking a picture of this is safer, you know, the other side of that is that here's how much error occurs. But, you know, we don't have the data for yeah. that, so. Ellen, you're muted. Yes, yeah, I'm back. Um, I did find my San Francisco notes and it said that they're, um, when they first held uh, their RCV election in uh, 2004, they used Sequoia, uh, the hanging chad company, <laughs> mm -hmm. fired by Dominion. And then as of November 2019, they switched to Dominion Democracy. Okay. So, the one through the LHS. What's that? That's the one through LHS. Yeah. Yes. I was getting mixed up which one are ES and S. Uh, I did, and, the, and image cast evolution I wrote down. So. That's the ES and S, right? Yeah. Or am I it's, wrong there? It's been a while. I have my report open. So Let me look similar. at it. The names are ridiculously similar. Well, you've got to have some sort of patriotic name in there. So ES and S was the original um, manufacturer of the Dominion, and they sold it to LHS. Just as the same with the active vote. So ESNS um, held the license for those machines originally, and they sold a lot of those licenses to LHS. Interesting. Right, because LHS is just a distributor, right? Correct. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, let me see. That's. 
because as far as we know, the democracy suite is currently the only matrix voting tabulate the software. Is that correct? Commercially available. Oh man, I'd have to go through the one, uh, yeah. the Dominion ones that were, uh, from my memory, uh, produced or being sold by uh, LHS are, yeah, the only ones that had uh, ranked choice, uh, not tabulation, but the calculation stuff. So both companies have machines which can scan ranked choice voting and produce the, uh, what it's called, the, uh, the, the vote data set or whatever it's called. Um, cast vote record cast vote record there you go uh but yeah dominion was the only one that had the ability to uh to do the actual calculations okay um but we did also find that there's that third party uh third party system which can also do it <laughs> right but that hasn't been certified by the state right <clears throat> yeah i played a bunch with that and it has some issues mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not comfortable recommending that as an option. You're talking about the third party software? Yeah. Yeah, the open source stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it was it sounds nice, but the town doesn't really want to get into the business of fixing and writing election software. So. Boy, are we a quiet group? Yeah, is that it? <laughs> yeah, we win down. We we have our tasks. Yeah, I do think we, we got stuff we, we got to do. Do we have uh, any portions of the report that are not yet assigned to someone to to write? Um, I think everything was assigned. The question is, if we actually if we kind of got cut off from meeting right at the point when we were kind of really gearing up to get all that written up. So some of it may have kind of halted in its tracks. I can um, send around again to everyone the pieces that we have so far. And if anybody has stuff they haven't sent to me, just so we kind of can find out where we're at, um, then we can evaluate what might be missing um, and, and proceed from there. Yeah, I was doing I the in, sorry to interrupt the inter um, the intro and the overview and that a lot of that is a moving target so uh, that'll take me a while to get back in the swing of that since uh, who knows what's changed since February when I or January when I drafted it mm -hmm. and I, I, we set I up, wrote sorry, and go sent on. in I wrote and sent in the section on tabulation methods but I volunteered to also do the the voter uh, outreach and education, and I haven't done that yet, so I need to do that and send it to you. Yeah, that's also going to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For our next meeting, do we have uh, ideas for an agenda, or should we pick one or two sections of the report that we can, uh, you know, go over and work together, or should we all just have like some smart goals for the next? Uh, for doing the report for the next time, and then we'll just kind of do a quick overview, uh, collate them, but then spend most of the time on something else like, you know, questions for the lawyer or whatever. And then after that meeting, we would all be able to go over the sections of the report that were complete and provide, you know, feedback and stuff on our time. As John said, you know, I'm kind of the same. I got to have some quiet time to go through something to actually process it. Do we want to update our timeline? Would that help? Seems to me as though meeting with the attorney is really important. She seemed to have some opinions about how Galvin's people ought to be approached and what the legislators are going to want to see and not see. And in light of the current situation, the, the, um, the RCV issue that will be coming to the ballot. And also in light of the COVID situation, she may have some guidance that would be really helpful in helping us focus going forward. And she doesn't have to travel if she's Zooming. Yeah, 
Well, I can check in with Paul to see um, what her availability is if the group would like to um, meet with her. That you know, if she's not available until three months from now, I would say we need to just move on. But if she could meet with us, say, you know, three weeks from now, that could be really useful. Um, so let me check in to find out what what our options are on that front. Yeah, we should get her on the calendar if we can. In the meantime, we should definitely send her a whole bunch of questions because I think if we, you know, if we send her a bunch of questions about this hand recount stuff, the time when actually talking in person is going to help a lot is if the answers and the questions that follow that start to get really messy and need sort of real-time communication. Uh, and it's best if we kind of unearth a lot of those before we start meeting so that if we do have a time set to meet with her, we're ready to hit the ground running as opposed to, you know, trying to go through that process in a 15 to 20 minute period with her uh, over Zoom. Do we have a list of questions for her? We don't as of right now. So. So before we meet with her, we need to generate that list. Right. We have the one about the hand recount. That seems like the most pressing one, but there are, right. I think there are others floating around. So. Right. So that's the idea is that it could be a sort of high priority item for our next meeting um, to generate that list of questions. Um, but we could still, you know, I can still push Paul to try to set up a meeting with her as soon as possible. Right. We have to have the questions ready at the time that we set up the meeting. That makes sense. By the time of the meeting. Yeah. Right. Like even before, if we can send her all the questions as soon as we, uh, you know, create them, if she can just send us answers back to those questions and it's, you know, really easy, you know, then, we, you know, if we still need the meeting time, we can use it for some of the other questions we have, uh, you know. Yeah. Like we shouldn't, we shouldn't constrain ourselves to, you know, waiting for a Zoom meeting with her because stuff's crazy. <laughs> So, okay, so first priority is that we should be generating a list of questions for her um, and getting those questions to Tanya. Mm -hmm. And then Tanya's going to talk with Paul about when we might be able to meet with her or you know, what, what her scheduling is like. Um, it seems to me like we should also have maybe one or two sections of report that Tanya's already received that we can review before our next meeting. Um, and so if we have time, we can start digging into those sections. Yes. Yes, that sounds good. And my other question is for, uh, for you, Jesse, do you feel like you have enough information to contact Jeff Silvestro and um, get, get some answers from him on some of our questions um, at this point? Is that yeah, we, we need those questions too, though, right? Like, and we talked about a couple of them here, but we should have more than one or two before we send them off to him. I can, you know, just send him those two questions just to start getting in touch with him again. He's probably going to be like, who's this guy? Uh, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Who's this guy who keeps staring at me over Zoom? I don't, what's going on? <laughs> All right, He's so. going to want to talk to you. He wants the business. So then on the report front, was there anybody who wants to volunteer that they feel their section is ready to be discussed, that they wanted to put that on our, our next agenda to discuss the, the section that they have submitted a draft on? We could take a look at the tabulation methods section that I wrote up. It's, I think, three and a half pages. And we could look at the ballot errors, too. That would be fine. That's two pages, I think. That sounds good. So we'll have those two sections. Um, finalize the list of uh, questions for the town attorney. So, if, you know, as you're sort of getting your head back into <laughs> the game here, um, if questions that we should be asking or occur to you, email them to me. I'll collate, you know, the whole set of suggestions. And then at the meeting, we can go through and kind of figure out a finalized set. Sounds good. Sounds good. Actually, I just saw something that might be an error in the last, in the minutes from the meeting, and I apologize for reading carefully now. <laughs> um, it said we called the meeting to order at 2.13 and we dismissed it at 2.35. Did we only meet for 20 minutes? Yeah. yeah we did. Quick, yeah. Wow. That's impressive. 
I don't remember. So a lot that seemed to get done for 20 minutes. So just wanted to double check. 20 minutes longer than the average meeting should be. <laughs> About 18. That was good though. <laughs> Thanks. Are we going to set the date for the next meeting today? Uh, we can do we want to do? I got my calendar out. Ready? I am free all next month, except for uh, the week of the 17th through the 21st. I am gone. And by gone, I mean on vacation, but probably not actually gone. It's vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, for me, we have early voting starting on the 22nd and going straight through. So I'm from the 22nd on, I'm straight out. Yeah, yeah. We should get as much done before then as we can. I'd be fine meeting next Friday as well. It seems like most of what we have to do for next meeting anyways is just kind of getting our heads back in the game mm -hmm. and, you know, creating some questions for the lawyers. I don't think uh, that's going to, you know, require an enormous amount of time for any of us. So would 2.30... Next Friday works for me. Uh, yep, that's fine. August 7th, yeah. Mm-hmm. Seven thirty to thirty, but I think I can move it. So let me. I should be able to move it. So let's go for that, or we could do three o'clock, or it's two thirty, better. Three's fine for me. He's all right. Sure. Okay. Let's you could three. literally say any time after ten thirty. I'd be fine. I assume that uh, we need to finish by four, for Sue. Four or... fifteen. Four fifteen. Okay. I mean, we, you know, we may well be, you know, I don't like meeting more than, much more than an hour anyway. Okay, so okay. three o'clock. So three o'clock a week from today. Yep. August 7th, okay. Let's Perfect. shoot for another 20 minute meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was exactly an hour, so that's impressive. All we spent right. more time trying to figure out what, we, what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't blame anybody or myself, you know, a lot of stuff's been going on. It's going to take a while to kind of refocus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anything else before we wrap up? Move to adjourn. Okay. I second. Super. All in favor of adjourn? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Rob, did Rob? Week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.